All right, so the problem we are tr we're trying to solve two problems. Uh, the first is high contention on the MMAP block for multi credit tasks, as everyone taking a page fold takes the MMAP term. And the other is a priority inversion between tasks which are monitoring uh, another, a, a low priority task, which is monitoring a high priority task. Um, and then it blocks and uh, everything goes to hell because the, uh, the uh, RW SEM is fair, which it, which it needs to be. But it does mean that um, we don't do priority inheritance and so everything is awful. Um, so last year we presented three options to look at. Uh, Michelle presented uh, speculative page faults. Uh, Siren did RC, presented RCU lookup and VMA lock, which is what we actually ended up doing. And I presented full RCU page fault handling, and everyone said, "Oh my God, that is far too scary. We're not going to do that." So here's, here I am talking about what Siren has done. Um, since last year, we replaced the RB tree with a maple tree, and that went into six to one. Thank you very much, Liam. And we are still dealing with the fallout, but you know that's. <laughs> Right, when, when, when you're doing something big for the first time, it's, it's, it's tricky, okay. Um, and now in 6.4, it's actually been merged. If you're running 6.4 RC1 on your laptop, you are running Surin's code. Um, John put up this very helpful write-up of exactly how it works, so I am not going to start talking about how it works. I'm just going to assume that you read the, that you did the reading. All right, so what is coming up? Uh, we have patches posted to the main list for handling faults in fileback VMAs with up-to-date pages in the page cache um, done under the same RCU protection that we currently do for anomalous pages. Um, we also have uh, patches for handling faults in pages which happen to be in the page cache, uh, sorry, in the swap cache. Right, so, an anon uh, so again, that's anonymous. But so it's, it's, it's just extending the, uh, the, the, the current patches that exist. So uh, right now, if we hit one of these two cases, we will fall back to taking the MMAP SEM, uh, sorry, the MMAP lock. Um, and if you add these patches, then it expands the number of cases in which we will handle it all under um, RCU plus the per VMA uh, semaphore protection. So what I want to talk about, because I mean, that's, that's just patch review right, and debugging. So I want, or we want to talk about, um, should we wait for IO under the protection of the VMA SEM, or should we handle it similarly uh, to how we handle the MMAP lock today, where we make sure to drop the MMAP lock before we wait for IO? And a similar question for starting IO. Uh, we would like to talk about reading uh, various files in slash proc without the MMAP lock, um, handling faults in, in VMAs which use user fault FD. Right now, if you, if, if you use user fault FD, we, we just always fall back to the MMAP lock. Um, and then device, VMAs which are uh, owned by device drivers. We want to talk about removing the MMAP lock entirely. Um, and we want to talk about handling faults without the VMA lock. So, you know, the, the thing you all s shouted at me last year about, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it back. And I have a slide for each of those. So, um, if you look in filemap.c in the page fault handler, you will see that uh, we, we, if we would need to sleep, that is, we find a page in the page cache and we decided, and we know it is not up to date. In order to prevent contention on the MMAP SEM, we drop the MMAP SEM. So we, we, we take a reference on the file, drop the MMAP SEM, and then we sleep in the page fault handler waiting for the page to come up to date. And then we restart. We restart the uh, page fault handling from the top. Should we keep this model? I think actually the um, the swap and the file cases are not the same here because uh, in the file case you can make a good argument that the contention that that could happen here would be if someone like unmaps the file while they are accessing it and then they, were, they had, that means they have two threads that do conflicting operation and it's kind of expected that one will have to wait on the other somehow. Um, so I think you could get away with uh, with waiting 
while you hold the VM lock in that case uh, without having to, to release the VM lock while you do that. I think in the Anon case, that argument doesn't really work because uh, VMAs don't really map into process visible uh, things in the Anon case. And so I, I see them as a really different case for VMAs. I would like us to have something more granular than for VMA logs or to deal with, you know, find a way to prevent uh, that, that sort of false conflict from occurring in the Anon case. So I'm going to restate what you said because I'm pretty stupid about a non-memory. So I want to check that I really understood what you said. Um, so what, what, what I think you're saying is that a process can call malloc twice, and those two malloc call, and, and, and they're big, so each one ends up at, by glibc calling uh, mmap. And those two happen to be combined into the same VMA because we're, we're trying to optimize and, and save space and memory and time and so on. Um, and therefore, there are conflicts that the application could not be reasonably aware would happen. Yes. Okay, good. I, I, I appreciate you letting me have the this time to learn. <laughs> yeah. Have you uh, done any tracing to see what, like, you know, keep the MM lock held for this process and then running something like uh, uh, lockstat and looking at the contentions that may arise. So instead of just a, you know, hand waving saying, yeah, do you, what do you believe, what do you believe, what do you believe, actually run, run some actual tests. And maybe even under like a production, I don't know if you want to try it under a production environment, but if you're actually ser seriously doing this, trying to get some way of doing some sort of tracing, there is lock contention tracing that you could do to enable and seeing how much contention there is that yeah. causes this to get some real numbers. We have regular bug reports of a uh, unnamed large database uh, product that uh, tends to care about uh, MAPSEM because uh, whenever you just start aggressive monitoring, like proc, bit, whatever, that really requires MAPSEM, that can be visible really heavily. Yeah. Into the slide where you get rid of it. <laughs> That's the last slide. All right. Um, should, 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 should be willing to start I.O. without the, the MMAP block. So the, 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 I think the answer is yes. And so it's only based on everything that I've just heard about Anon being different from file memory. This, this always sounds like it's a good idea to start it. It's, it. Because we're not saying you can't sleep during the page fault path and, and holding the various locks. Of course, you can sleep. You can sleep to allocate memory if, if you absolutely have to. Um, so starting I/O. So 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 I think I think we're still saying you can call down into device drivers with MM uh, locks held. We're not trying to get rid of those paths, um, but we're um, so there's 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 nobody said we 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 we, we actually, it's actually causing us problems. We should we should do our best to drop all the MMAP locks before we start calling into device drivers. Okay, good. Moving on. Monitoring without the MMAP lock. Michael's problem, or maybe Facebook's problem, and of course, unnamed database problem. Um, so this actually is a simple matter of programming, at least for, the, at least for some of them, right? Um, the, the, the maps file, we, we can just do this all under the RCU lock today, and it is simply a matter of programming. Um, the, uh, I, mean, I mean, since the, uh, the, radix, the, um, the maple tree went in, so we've actually been able to do it for like three kernel releases now. Um, it's, it's just that, you know, there's, there's not been time to, <laughs> to write that code. Um, but for the SMAPS interface, this gets a bit more complicated because we actually need to prevent page tables from being freed. Um, so the ways that you prevent page tables from being freed today are you can take the MMAP lock. Um, on x86, you have to disable interrupts. On other architectures, it's, it's sufficient to um, hold the RCU lock. But on x86, you actually have to disable interrupts. And I, I <laughs> the, 
this, this, this just feels like stupid legacy and we should get rid of it and make x86 the same as everybody else and RCU free the page tables. So, so it's not even uh, fully true that uh, disabling interrupts helps because you, you do that to block the interprocessor interrupts that flush the TLBs and that effectively blocks the removal of page tables but there are the paraviltralized uh, variants that don't use the IPIs and then those have to use the RCU freeing. Right. The argument that's been made is that the IPIs also are effectively the same, or sorry, disabling interrupts is effectively the same as being an RCU critical region. So it effectively does both. And it also allows you to make this weird x86 inference that you're blocking IPIs and thus you're blocking the, the non-RCU page table path, which is completely nuts. Um, I, I've been hoping, Matthew, that your struct page rework will let us put RCU heads in all of the page table struct pages so we can RCU free everything everywhere for every architecture, but I don't know if I'm just being wildly optimistic. Uh, so there's already an RCU head in struct page. Uh, so we, I, I think we can already do this on every architecture, I think. I don't, I don't think there's a reason not... Uh, I, I'm, I'm being told it's, being, it's overlaid, overloaded by some architectures, and yes, it is, but not at the point where they're being freed, I believe. I, don't, I, I think at the point where they're being freed, they, they will never be written to or read. No, no, I know, I, know that, I know they are overloaded, but I don't think those overloaded fields are used at the point where we're trying to free the page table. Uh, Michelle is saying that uh, it's done differently based on different architectures and, and different config options. Um, Apparently, it, alloc it actually allocates memory. It doesn't actually use the RCU head that's currently in the struct page, which I didn't know, so I've, I've, I've just learned that as well. And to add to this, there's also, it, it will also depend on the config option for split PTL logs. There is also a range there. So the debugging is, uh, that option is enabled, which is enabled by one of the debug options for slab, I believe. It will also uh, add some issues there because PTL is not part of the, of the entry anymore. And Mike wants the mic. I think it's feasible to do RCU free of page tables and we can move, we kinda can move the RCU head or create a special RCU head in the page table type union uh, and then they uh, use that explicitly to make or see free of the page tables. Jason of Rose. Right. I think it's a great idea. And, uh, but there's still this confusing comment in GUP that I was looking into last week that says you still can't use RCU here because of some reason it doesn't make sense. And I, I tried to deduce what that reason was and, and I don't think it makes sense or at least it doesn't make sense today but maybe somebody knows better. I don't know. Uh, he's, he said that Jan Horn explained it to him, but now he doesn't remember the explanation. Yeah, so he might be a good person to ask. <laughs> All right, so general consensus is we want to do it. We just think that there might be demons. I think it would be extremely useful to write that to the mailing list. There are people lo looking for projects, and especially, as you say, PROC maps uh, seems to be RCU really easy, so low-hanging fruit for somebody to look into because uh, most people in, in this room are really busy, so uh, somebody else might be looking for a nice little project. Without having that described, I'm regularly asked to uh, share my to-do list. Yeah, same, that, same here. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, th this is a good one to pursue for somebody to take on. Because it should be easy, but it's going to take testing. Uh, Turin. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I looked quickly at the user fault D and it looks very similar to the swap um, case. Uh, so basically we can uh, drop the, 
what what we do right now is we are dropping a map lock before uh, notifying the user space that hey you need to handle this page page fault, and then we are retrying. So I think the same approach will work with per VMA logs unless somebody can tell me why it wouldn't work. But uh, yeah, maybe Peter can. I, I would like to see the patch. I, I think uh, what you said is correct as we uh, per our discussion privately okay. there. So I, yeah, I, I assume what user code FD does is quite simple that it yields itself and wait for some response okay. that is resolved. So I think it's simpler than the swap. Okay, so once we are done with swap, I think I can ex uh, apply the same, the the same pattern there. Have to do to send out so that's, that's easy. Fantastic. I love that one of the people do the work. All right. So one final thing that we probably want to start talking about is handling faults in device driver VMAs under this uh, Im improved locking scheme. Uh, but device drivers may use the MMAP lock to exclude faults. So they may be relying on having taken the MMAP lock somewhere and then they know that they can't have any faults happen. Um, so. I, I, I don't intend to go through and audit every device driver that uh, supports um, a fault handler. Um, one really easy way for device drivers to take, a, to, take uh, to, 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 to make use of this is actually to use slash abuse file map fault. Um, there's absolutely nothing stopping a device driver from putting the pages that it owns into a radix tree attached, so in, into the X-ray that is attached to the uh, inode eye mapping, and use th all of the stuff that we have currently available for file systems. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a pained expression, and, and, and I'm not surprised. Um, there, there may be very good reasons not to do that, um, but it, it is one possibility. Um, the device driver is also going to need to attest that it does not drop the MMAP block in its fault handle. I don't believe there are any that do that today, but you know, it's something that they might be doing. Oh yeah, David. Um, just like you mentioned something very interesting, that sometimes the MMAP block is used to block page faults. Yeah. What would currently happen if you do fork concurrent to a page fault? Like with the fork that takes the MMAP write lock block any kind of page faults because I think like if there's a VMA, like would we go ahead and lock each and every VMA during fork in order to, so you could get concurrent page faults with, uh, oh, I suspect then that there is something broken. Be yeah. ready for surprises. Yeah, the so MMAP lock would not take a page fault. Uh, the, sorry, page fault will not take uh, MMAP lock, it will take per, per VMA lock. So unless you are affecting the same VMAs, it wouldn't uh, be affected by the fork. Like, like in the general case, device drivers have to assume their VMAs can be forked, and you know most simple device drivers, they have like some, you know, very simple thing that they're doing in the, the map. And if I fork or I, I, I M dupe or something, I get multiple VMAs. I, I can't really rely on the MMAP lock for serialization. Or if I am, I'm already broken with fork, right? So I think that's I think that's good logic, David. At least makes sense to me. After the VMA. After the per VMA lock work, uh, page fault can happen concurrently, right? And before that, we can't. Before that, it would happen concurrently in multiple processes if you forked. No, no, no. Why not? Uh, before that, the fork takes write lock, and uh, every fault handler takes read lock, which will block at the write lock. No, 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 not during fork, after fork. Oh, after fork. Right, I have two VMAs. Two VMAs, two processes, two MM structs, two, two MMF locks. There's no, there's no serialization there, right? Right now, the per VMA locking is only done for anon VMAs. So uh, I think you don't hit that issue with drivers yet. And I think when we want to generalize that, it will have to be on a per, like with some sort of a white list, rather than just saying, hey, we can do it everywhere. I don't think that's going to work right away, because there are drivers that expect to be serialized on the MMAP lock. It's not just if they're going to release it. It's like there are some that expect that serialization to happen right now. Uh, I have. Uh, 
not in detail. I know that Perf does some really weird things. Like, you know, you can m map some pages that will uh, hold a log of events. And I don't know exactly what they do, but they do weird things with the map log. And uh, if you just try to have them run con uh, concurrently, I don't think that would, uh, you, you would have, you would have to understand what you're doing, which. <laughs> So the, the, the last post on the slide is that um, we, we may want to be advising device driver writers to implement the, the map pages uh, option uh, function pointer as well as the fault function pointer. So map pages actually runs protected by the RCU read log now um, as of uh, I think 6.3. Um, certainly 6.4. So, you know, they, 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 they definitely can't sleep during it, but it is going to be the most efficient way to uh, get your pages into, uh, mapped into user space. So Christoph made a nice series a while ago to try and simplify the creation of Anon inodes and device drivers. Um, that, if you want to go down this path, can we, it would be probably essential to get that work completed and merged. I, I think there was some discussion with Alviro or something and it never, it just kind of dropped it. But currently if you want to get an Anon inode that's of suitable to hang map pages off, it's a, it's a pain. Okay, but you, you, you can implement your own map pages because you, 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 can do, you, you, do, you do already have your own, your own fault handler. In that same struct you have a map pages and your map pages can do anything. It's, it's not, you don't have to use file map map pages. You can do anything. Um. Okay, but you were talking about putting it in the, the X-ray. That's associated well, with the I, I was suggesting that, that that is one thing a device driver could choose to do. It doesn't have to implement its own fault handler. It could instead put uh, pages into the X-ray uh, and pretend to be a file system and do far less work all by itself. I, I, I don't know any device driver that does that today. It's, it's always uh, because, you know, I'm a device driver. I'm not a file system, but... Well, they usually yeah. don't have struct pages in a lot of cases. I mean, well, I, I mean, depend, depends on your device driver. I, I've, I've, I've seen it both ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know both ways, but yeah, several cases. Okay. All right. Well, I'm, I'm conscious we're, 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 we're into coffee break, so um, getting to my penultimate slide, removing the MMAP lock entirely. So after we've done everything, I, 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 I think Al is trying to, Al is trying to make a point. You may want to unmute. I'm sorry? I, I, I saw Alvaro raising hand. I, I, I don't have any control over what's going on online. Okay. Uh, my question was pretty much uh, dealt with. Uh, it was which I know to use because for block devices, we do have a unique inode for all device nodes referent to the same device. For character devices, we end up with uh, inodes of device nodes on slash dev or wherever they are. And you can breed them to hell and back. So you would need some <coughs> mechanism that would give you per device I know and we definitely don't want that uh, for every, I don't know, pseudo TTY, whatever. Uh, it's not like block devices where we would do it uniformly for everyone. Uh, some variation of uh, anon I nodes would be used that way, I guess. I'll need to look through the Christoph's page set, uh, again, to give any better details, but that pretty much deals with the question I had. Great. Thanks Thanks for that, Al. I withdraw the suggestion of pretending your device driver is actually a file system. All right. So That's also around. So something that we would like to get to is just to remove all use of MMAP block when handling faults. And I, I, I think this is a multi-year project. Then, you know, we're, we're clearly capturing the biggest wins first. And, you know, at, at some point, it's going to be kind of like the big kernel lock, right? That the, it's just, we've got these tail end things that are holding us getting rid of it. And eventually, we will get rid of it properly. Um, 
may, may, maybe this is not an analogy that makes too much sense to people. I know there's a number of people in the room who came here who was like, what's the big kernel lock? Uh, we got rid of it like 15 years ago, so, you know. Um, but we would like to remove use of the MLAP MMAP block to protect the VMA tree. So the VMA tree doesn't really need to be guarded by uh, a semaphore. We can, we can actually guard it with a spin lock of its own. Um, so this is one way that we can go. We can, we can start splitting out the various different things that use uh, the MMAP sem into their own lock. It's not entirely clear to me if and how we can do that. Uh, there's a bit of tie-in between the reverse mapping locks or the map lock and the R map locks and uh, there was a previous attempt to make the R map locks R map locks uh, non blocking but that was reverse like that didn't really work out for some use cases and so I think because of that because of the tie in we have between the two we have to update the two kind of at the same time uh, it might be hard to make the MMAP lock be non blocking Yep. No, understood. I, I have put very little thought into exact all the details, so yeah, absolutely. So, last slide. So handling faults without the VMA lock. So we, 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 we are at the point where there is no lock contention, but we may have got to a point where there is cache line contention. Right, so we, if, if we have a large VMA, particularly like Michelle was saying for anonymous, where we have a very large VMA and we have a lot of page faults being handled in that VMA, uh, the, that, we, that all the threads are bouncing the cache line that contains the, effectively the ref count. I mean, it's, it's, it's done as, the, as, as, as an RW sem, but we're using it as a ref count. Uh, we're bouncing that ref count around between all the different threads as, as they start and finish their page faults. So, and this is where we're going to need to use perf. We're going to need to, to study, you know, where, where, where are the uh, slowdowns coming from? Where is the contention? If that's where the contention is, we do have a path. And it's, it's the one that I suggested last year. Um, I have gone through uh, in detail and figured out, you know, can we do it? And we can, but there are the complexities. Uh, like we have to allocate page tables while we're holding the RCU read lock or we have to drop the RCU read lock, allocate the page tables, and then come back. And so I've been talking with Paul uh, McKenney about you know, how, how we might be able to do that uh, in a more efficient way. Um, it's it's, it's, it's kind, of, kind of nasty. The, the, we, we didn't come up with us any nice ways of doing this. Um, yeah, and, and, and then we, we, we start to go through all the different things that we're doing right now under VMA lock protection, you know, we, we, we look, look for our lowest hanging fruit. So being able to allocate and insert new and non pages. And again, we would have to say, well, we're only protected by the RCU read lock at this point. Like allocating memory is kind of hard. So do we do a GFP no wait or do we um, drop the RCU read lock and, and, and restart after we've done an allocation? Yes, Stephen. I just want to real quick, I know we have coffee and everything like that, but are you familiar with the runtime verifier? Or, or runtime verification. That uh, I, I briefly skinned the patches. So basically the idea of it is it hooks into the trace events and you create a model. And if you want to actually follow the correct, you actually define the model that you want. And if it ever goes outside that model, it could panic, print, warn, whatever. So if it's something like this, if you want to make sure you assume that everything's happening correctly, if you have the correct trace points in there, you could develop the model, put it in, and you run it. It's made to run on production too as well. Just want to let people know that this exists. That's cool. Thanks, Stephen. Um, yeah. So, 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 when we get to this handling faults without the VMA lock, we then have uh, uh, three or four different ways where we might be in different contexts where we might be in a fault handler. You know, we might be holding the MMAP sem. We might be in pure RCU mode. We might be in RCU mode, but actually protected by the VMA lock. And so there's. All, all these different fallback scenarios, and it does start to get quite complicated. And uh, I think, you know, last year I was informed, you know, the complexity scares people, and, you know, I hear you. So we're only going to go this far if the performance warrants it. So, any last uh, thoughts? Sounds like coffee time. Oh, Michael. 
I would like to, for the um, doing forge without the VMA lock, I would like to do that for Anon because of the what I was saying before that uh, the poor VMA locking is adequate for files and for Anon it's a bit more questionable. Uh, li like there can be false conflicts that are kind of unavoidable with, with Anon. So I think doing... Uh, Avoiding taking that log for, for, for Anon would be good because of that. Yeah, and it, 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 it's totally possible to get there based, you know, building from where, where we're at with Surin's patch. We can, get, we can get there. We're just going to need to bring data to show that the complexity is worth it. Thank you.